Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special Families in Nature. Today, I am so honored to have Hannah Von Vecchio here taking over this month's Families in Nature. She is a pretty remarkable eighth grade student that started her program Trash for Turtles back in 2013 and launched her own blog at in sorry in 2015. Through the talk today we're going to learn about the importance of the ecosystems and ways we can work together. So obviously you're not here today to listen to me but we're here to talk to Hannah. So I'm going to hand it over to hers. Oh, don't forget today, they're in the chat, I'm sorry, in Facebook, ask questions. This will be interactive as we go along. So make sure you put anything in there and we'll make sure that Hannah gets all of those questions. Okay, enough for me. It's now time to hear from Hannah. <laughs> okay, um, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Hannah Von Vecchio. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, I'm going to share my screen so we can see my little, oh, I don't know. How do we want to make this? On the bottom, it should say screen share. Says the host. I'm not asking it. You should now see it. Okay. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, um, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out today. Um, my name is Tana Von Vecchio and I'm going to be talking to you all about my Trash for Turtles project. So a little bit about me before I talk about my project and some of the things I do. Um, I'm 13 years old. I'm an eighth grader at Chris County Middle School. Uh, I love reading and playing soccer and my favorite animals are sharks and sea turtles. Um, I also love helping the environment, which has led to my project. Um, that's an old picture of me. <laughs> um, just a little bit of uh, vocabulary review, so then in case you guys don't know these, some of this uh, vocabulary, um, I'm sure some of you do though. Uh, so marine, which is marine means ocean, so that would be if you were saying marine uh, animal, it would be a ocean animal, so that would be like a fish. Um, and then there's the environment, which is like your areas around you, so in this case I'm going to be using environment as in the planet we live on, the area around us. And then um, ecosystem, ecosystem is like a, a specific group of non-living and living animals in a certain area. And that would be, for example, like a swamp ecosystem would have uh, like alligators and different things than a ocean ecosystem would. Um, then conservation, conservation is when you are, uh, there's the word conserve in there. And that word also, and that means that we're trying to protect something. And then uh, marine debris, which also has marine in it, it means ocean debris, which is debris is like trash or plastic. And those are some pictures of me uh, doing some things uh, that I will talk about a little bit later as well. So just to start off, I'm gonna start with a few uh, little questions that I'll answer uh, to start us off. Um, so why should we care about marine debris even when we are far from the ocean? So in some places, especially where I live, um, we're a little far from the ocean. And so it's a wonder, why does our stuff impact what happens with the ocean? And this, uh, this uh, the trash here, impacts there because all of, all of the water, when it rains and there's, uh, all of it eventually goes to our ocean. So the rivers eventually lead to the oceans as those are plastic. So if we were to throw something out, all of that is going to eventually lead downstream to our ocean. So it's important that what we do here uh, impact, it impacts there. So as long as we are being well, the way we are supposed to be here, that would be uh, that make our environment and ocean clear. So how can we? How can pollution impact threatened species like sharks and sea turtles? Um, off to the side, I have a couple pictures and examples of this: a uh, whale shark and a uh, green sea turtle, or not green sea turtle. I think that's um, but there, uh, the hawksbill sea turtle, I think, uh, has uh, plastic and is wrapped in a fishing line or fishing net. And so 
here, this sea turtle is being wrapped in this fishing net, so it's not being able to breathe. And that can really hurt sea turtles and harm them and uh, kill them. And for example, whale sharks, for example, they are uh, filter fears. So when they are ingesting things, like they might ingest plastic, and that's going to go into their stomachs, which might uh, make them starve because their stomachs are full of plastic, which is really bad. And so we want to make sure that our pollution doesn't come to hurt these animals. Um, about my project. So I started my project at five years old in 2013. Wow, that was a while ago. Um, I originally wanted to just help sea turtles, but now I've more moved into also helping with pollution and sharks also. So it's been a really a great journey. Um, I've done 56 cleanups, these road, river, and beach cleanups, and I would love to do more. Hopefully, hopefully that number can get higher. Um, I have recycled approximately 2,700 pounds of cans. Uh, I will mention later how that, were, how I originally started my project doing that. Um, I created recycled cotton bags and note cards. I co-designed recycled water bottle and cotton t-shirts, like a t-shirt I'm wearing now. And I've created a petition and proposed it to my county commissioner. As of today, I've raised $9,100 and uh, for sharks and sea turtles. So that's really cool. Um, so some of the groups I've helped support over the many years I've done my project, um, I've helped the Georgia Sea Trail Center on Jekyll Island my uh, first year. Um, I've done the Satilla River Keeper, uh, the St. Simons Island Sea Turtle Project, uh, Georgia DNR's Sea Turtle Conservation Program, the Credit Research Project on Wausau National Wildlife Refuge, and Jackson Rural University's Georgia. So how did my project start? How did I come to want to raise money for sharks and sea turtles and all of this. So it started when I was inspired by a sea turtle here named Mahi. Mahi is a green sea turtle. So Mahi is, if you can see in this picture, um, she doesn't have a right flipper. And that's because she was entangled in fishing line. Thankfully, the Georgia Sea Turtle Center was able to uh, recover her, him or her. They, they believe it's a she, but we're not quite sure. Um, that helps. Uh, her to be able to get, it had to be amputated because of that. And so it is really sad to see that our plastic could hurt something like this innocent sea turtle. But so I went on to try and make my own project to stop this stuff from happening or to try to make my own change in my area. So here's the, my journey through the years from 2013 to 2020, um, all the different things I've done over the many years I've done my project. So, oh man, um, this is what I little. Um, this is me when I started my project collecting aluminum cans and recycling them. So me and my sister on the right, on the picture on the right, uh, we went out on different roads near our area and have aluminum cans and people donated them to us. And uh, we tried to recycle those and gave all of that money to the Georgia Sea Trail Center. Uh, later, I also did a t-shirt design with Miss Rosanna Morris. I've done two actually with her. Um, one, the shirt I'm wearing now, uh, and then the other, which uh, was made of 100% recycled plastic water bottles, which is super fascinating. But there was a study I did later, which I will also talk about, uh, which inspired me to move to cotton t-shirts. So in 2017, I did a trash -a uh, this is a 10 mile cleanup from my house county commissioner's office. I picked up a total of 4,805 pounds of trash and uh, 4,785 pounds of trash. And so uh, I picked that up with the help of a lot of different people in different groups. And I tried to go to my county commissioners and show them that these are our back roads, these are our county roads. And this is stuff that's, this is our community that's being, that's so trashy and disgusting and we need to do something about it. And so this was me going to them to talk about that. So this was the project part, the gathering data part. Um, here, it was really fascinating when I did this trash on to see how people from the community were coming together to help support my project. And uh, just on different cases, just all of us coming to pick it up. And as you can see on the right, just all the kinds of trash, disgusting trash we found on these side roads. The, uh, the recliners, the tires, the big things, mattresses, and then there was hundreds of cigarette butts and stuff, which is 
extremely disgusting, but uh, it shows that we really need to do something in my town. So I mentioned earlier that I moved to cotton t-shirts. Why is that? And that is because of this project I did. Um, when I was in fifth grade, we had to do a science fair project. And I was like, yo, cool, let's see what we can do. And so I decided to do a project um, that's called What's for Breakfast? And that was when I went to this creek, as you can see, that's very trashy on both those two side pictures. Um, and I looked and to see if these redfish sunfish that were in this area were being impacted by all of this trash that was in uh, here to see if they were ingesting microplastics. Microplastics means small plastic but very tiny stuff. Sometimes you can't even see. Most of the time you need the microscope. And so uh, I went and did that project. And through that, I was able to see that they were ingesting plastic. But although this was a little biased as a study because it may have been at my house, um, we did learn that this uh, fibers in our clothes, when you wash them, goes doesn't get filtered out. And so that's why when you have cotton t-shirts instead of like polyester, for example, they don't shred fibers. And so it is really cool to use cotton t-shirts and that's better for the environment. So that was really eye-opening for me. Um, I've done many cleanups over the years, as I've mentioned. One of these along the Satil River, a river close to me in my area. And so this is just us going straight out, me and my sister, um, getting that trash straight out of the environment. And here is an example of how our trash here is going to eventually, through the Satil River, go to the ocean. And that is just disappointing. But thankfully, some of this trash that we picked up that day did not. When I did my trashathon, I went to uh, propose my thing to the county commissioners, tell them about all of the stuff that's wrong, all the trash and stuff that's in our area and how nasty it is and how we need to do something about it. And when I did this, I proposed to them and here, which I needed a stool, which is kind of funny because um, I was short. And, um, but I went to them asking what things they could do. And so later I sent them a follow-up letter as can be seen on the right picture, um, asking, what did they do? What do we do? And um, though there was not a whole lot of action, I can really see that we're going to be able to do something about it. And it's really cool to see that uh, some, I was able to bring awareness to some people. I've done many fundraising uh, efforts over the years. Uh, here's a couple, this is just a collage of all the different things I've done. Uh, I wrote a book, I've designed t-shirts, I've done all kinds of different things, nail real straws, all different kinds of things as my project has progressed from the years. And it's really cool looking back on it to see all the different things I've done to help support uh, sharks and sea turtle research. So this year and last year, I supported the Coretta Research Project on Wausau National Wildlife Refuge. Um, and here I'm with Miss Chris and she's one of the ladies that works there um, but it is really cool for me to be able to fund their research because what they do is they uh, help these sea turtles that are that come up and lay on their nest and they research them to see and do different tests and stuff and try to see if these sea turtles um, different things and help them survive and conserve them. And so it is really cool to be able to support this group and support their efforts with that. So here's a couple examples of me sharing my message over the years from when I was little to now and doing booths and other things, um, me being able to share with other people like I am now, a little bit about what I'm doing and some of the things you can do in your area to try to prevent trash and uh, try to prevent this, uh, try to keep our environment clean. So uh, another thing that's really uh, helped me over the years grasp this research here is I every year, except this year because of Corona, um, I've been able to go out with Mr. Mark Dodd with the uh, Georgia DNR sea turtle program and look and see these sea turtles coming up on these beaches and seeing all the different kinds of research that they do there. And it's really cool to be able to see what all of our funding, some of the funding goes to. And that year I set up, one of the years I set up game cameras so I would see what kind of predators were there. And that was another example of that. But it was really cool for me to be able to see that straight on what the research looks like. 
here's an example of kids inspiring kids. So kind of like I'm doing now, some of your kids, some of you may be adults, but here's an example of Olivia and Carter from One More Generation. If you haven't heard of them, they're a really big group. They work with pangolins and uh, try to do and plastic stuff. And so it was really cool to see them when they were starting off their project, inspiring me to do my project. Another example of kids inspiring kids was during the 100 miles choosing to lead conference last year um, with 100 miles. Uh, so called why fit in when you were born to stand out. I was on this panel and I was able to inspire other kids about my project like I'm doing now, hopefully, and uh, also see these other panelists and other things they're doing in their communities. And it was really cool to be able to see that. So now I'm going to be talking about the present and future of conservation. So as Little Turtle here has said, I'm going to be talking about technology in different ways that because we're developing uh, as human beings and developing more technology that we've been able to use new ways to try and reduce plastics, reduce trash in general, try to make our environment a better place. So modern problems, modern solutions. So naturally our future is technology. We're going to naturally develop in technology as we go on. So naturally we can solve our problems with it. Trash, litter, climate change, stuff like that with it. And so here is an example. Um, this is a project that I did over the summer about a underwater ROV. And this ROV we had to adapt using less things, things you could find from a dollar store. And we would adapt it to try to be able to pick up trash. And so it was really, it was really fun to work with, but also it's just a way to be able to see that our, all of our uh, technology, we can put it to good use. And this is an example of that. And I'm going to show a little demo video, if I can do this, of our robot in action. A little bit of the demonstration, let's say. I don't know if it's showing up. Is it showing up? It's showing up. Okay. Pretty sure it is. All right. Here we go. So here's a little demonstration. So I'd introduce this in the state. So here is us, um, it's, it can, might be a little hard to see because of the plastic bottle, but we put a little thing inside of it. So Hannah, see it. If this this, is a, hi Hannah, it's Steph. If this is a different screen than your presentation, you're gonna have to reshare that as a different Oh, screen. okay, here, I, apologies, oops. Okay, let's see, how am I, how do I do it? So you'll have to, to go back to screen share at the bottom and share a new screen. Okay, all right, let's, here we go. Now I'll figure it out. All right, here we go. There, Technology, perfect. am I right? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> All right, here we go. So here's a demonstration of my project. Uh, so I worked with one of my friends, Olivia. So, like I was saying uh, before, we couldn't really see, uh, this plastic ball here is being picked up by our little robot and it, or ROV, and it's showing that uh, we can use our technology to uh, make new change in our in areas. So this was just a little demonstration of it. And so that was really cool to work with, different items and stuff. Those are those six backgrounds. <laughs> and then this is the new can. So that's just a little way of showing how our technology can be used in new ways. And so I believe I'm going to have show, let's see, back to my there we go. Okay, I believe that's showing up. 
All right, so here are some real world examples of uh, different ways technology is being used. And even though our little thing wasn't really exactly going out there to do things, but here are some examples of that actually being put in place. And so different, different uh, ways there over the years that people have been using technology to try to get rid of some uh, plastic in our oceans. So um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about Esperanza, and then we can do a little activity. Um, not sure, really sure how we're going to work this if it's with the chat or whatever. Um, but so Esperanza, uh, she was a loggerhead sea turtle on Walsall National Wildlife Refuge. She nests frequently there. And um, her name means hope, and she was adopted through last year's project. Last year, we did a little name game type thing to name the sea turtle and to raise money for that. And so uh, Esperanza was through that. And um, I think, uh, Miss Bethany, I think you're going to do something with the chat to see if we can see how people can guess for the eggs. Yes, ma'am, I'm on. All right. So if you want to write in the chat um, little guesses about that, and then I'm um, sure Miss Bethany can pick out uh, which ones, a couple of different things, and then I'll show the little results of what we've found or which one, what act, how many she actually laid. So, guy, so people in the chat, if you can guess how many eggs she laid her first time this year. There is a little delay between your, Hannah, your presentation and it on Facebook Live, so it might take them a second. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got a guess of 80. Wow. All right. I'm not going to say until we get a couple more and then I'll tell how many she laid the first time. Uh, how about 75? I got that through text message. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it might be time to let them know. Oh, right. the mind, Rebecca just said 100. 100? That's a, these are all great guesses. Oh, another guess of 77. See, there is a little delay. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I'm going to reveal there's another one. So if you, uh, you didn't participate the first time, you participate again. Um, but uh, so the answer was on May 28th in 2020, uh, she laid 120 eggs. So this was her third time. She had two false crawls, but then she false crawl means she went up on the beach and then was like, no, nope, I'm not going to lay today. And so she came back out. But uh, then uh, she finally laid on the 28th and she laid 120 eggs. This is on the Wausau uh, National Wildlife Refuge, uh, their credit research project page, uh, their little database thing through that. And um, there's another one. And this, uh, she, uh, there's also how many times did she lay? Because sometimes she may have laid multiple, she might have only laid once. So here's a little guess to see if you guys can guess how many times she laid. So if you want to enter that into the chat. Well, that's a hard question, Hannah. How many times did she lay this year? Let's see. So if you want to guess that one again, you can write it in the comment section. Oh, we got it uh, five times was the first guess coming in. Okay. Great guess. Am I allowed to guess? You can if you'd like to. Oh, actually, Rebecca Ann Brown, she just guessed four, and that's what I was going to guess. <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, no. <laughs> Those are our great guesses. Um, so um, thank you all for participating. Those of you that participate. Oh, one more of three. One more? One more. Yeah, three. Guess all right, three. Five, four, mm -hmm. three. Those are all wonderful guesses. Great job, everyone. <laughs> she actually laid four. So great job to uh, those of you that guessed four because 
Um, she laid on May 28th, oh, uh, June 11th, June 27th, and August 1st. And so here on the, the database, you can see that she laid 120 the first time, 126, 129, and then they aren't sure about how many she laid the last time. But that is really cool. So uh, great job to all of you that guessed. Um, so I'm not sure how we're going to distribute it. I'm sure Ms. Stephanie can contact those of you that guessed. Um, so for the winners, thanks to the Youth Ocean Conservation Summit, uh, thanks to their mini grant I received, um, I was able to give out shirts at things like these events. And though we weren't able to be in person, I'm really happy we could work this out through this. Um, but the Youth Ocean Conservation Summit uh, has really helped through uh, helping me be uh, a better conservationist and help reach people better. And so uh, through that, they were able to allow me to be able to give out shirts at events. And so this is an example of that. And I'm sure Ms. Stephanie can get with those of you that guessed uh, through that. So thank you all for participating. Those were all some great guesses. So uh, a little bit about how you can help. And uh, so there's a couple things you can do. Um, so you can participate in local cleanups. Uh, so go out and if they're like, if they're on Facebook or something like this, they get, they propose uh, they're doing a local cleanup or something. Go out and support because it really helps uh, get that trash immediately out of the environment and uh, really helps uh, those groups when you support them as well. Um, educating others. So it doesn't have to be something as uh, big as what I'm doing, like telling all of a big group of people or giving a presentation or anything. Something as simple as maybe you should use a stainless steel straw instead of a plastic one. It's simple, but it really works when people, uh, a lot of people do it. And so that's really important that we do that. And then another thing is to do the three R's, uh, reuse, reduce, and recycle. So if you can't, uh, so this is like a really good way to go by. So if you don't wanna use plastic in general, for example, you just don't wanna do it, but like you don't want to use it in general. So just use a water bottle instead. But if you do need it, you can reuse it. So you reuse it over and over and over and over again. But then um, depending on what group you're working with, you can try to recycle that also. And that uh, really how that's a really good thing to go by when it comes to plastics in particular to um, try to stay away from it. But if you do use it a lot of times, then you're not using so many more trash. Um, and another thing you can do is support projects like Trash for Turtles. And um, I forgot to mention, if you do little uh, cleanups, uh, make sure to take silly photos because those are fantabulous because a word I like to use a lot, a little word I made up for. Um, it's great to take pictures of yourself, um, even though they may look silly, it's really fun to do. So another way you can help is you can use your interests and hobbies to make the town or uh, towns to make the world a better place. So I, when I first started my project, uh, after I just, uh, after the uh, recycling of cans, um, I started doing uh, note cards. And so these were where I was drawing. So I was really into art at the time. And that's an example. If you're really into art, you can do that. Or I'm, I enjoy speaking. And so this is an example of that speaking to other people. And so just use your gifts to try and make the world a better place. And it can be about the environment, it can be about any other things you're passionate about. It's important to use your things to make the world a better place. And so, um, so if, even if you are an adult or, you're, or you are a kid, you can make a difference. And so you can talk to others, you can join organizations. Um, if you're old enough, you can volunteer, you can donate to different groups, it's just a bunch of different things you can do. Uh, even if you may not be old enough or you are old enough, there's plenty of things you can do to make the world a better place. Um, just like a little shout out to my blog, uh, earthinspiredkids.com. And so this is a blog site I update about monthly about some of the things I did through the month and uh, different ways and stuff that I've learned that I'd like to share. And so that's a really cool website if you all would like to check that out. Um, so I would like to thank you all for listening to me talk. Um, uh, thanks to the Youth Ocean Conservation Summit, uh, the Carter Research Project, and 100 Miles. Um, if we have any questions, if you'd like any questions, if you have any questions, you can post those in the chat also. I'm cool to answer as 
many questions as you all have. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. This is Steph coming back on outline. Um, I was really inspired by all you're doing. So while we wait for anyone else to type in a question, um, what is your next goal? Like what's your next thing you wanna do with your project? So this year, this coming year in 2020, um, I'm going to be raising money for the Carter Research Project on Wausau. And I'm also going to be, um, I'm hopefully going to be working with uh, the shark people again this year. And so uh, that will be cool, but um, we're thinking about new different ways to incorporate things I like into the project. So now I'm really big into reading. So we're thinking if I could do like a reading type thing, we're not exactly sure exactly, uh, I'm not exactly sure exactly what I'm doing in this upcoming year, but uh, the goal for this year is to reach 10,000. And so that would be a big marker for this year. Well, if I have faith in you, you're going to reach that mark. Thank you very much. No other question has come in yet, but there are a lot of thank yous and great jobs coming in and how inspiring you are. So there's a lot of good compliments coming in to you as well. Thank you all. I'm very happy to hear it. <laughs> Well, and the other thing too, Hannah, is because it is a little delayed and if people came in late, they're not getting, they're not the same point we are. Um, yeah. If you do have further questions for Hannah, you can continue to post those and we can have Hannah answer them once they come in too. So um, yes. if there isn't any, um, uh, we did have another comment just come in saying she loved this um, fantastic job and love seeing how your project has grown over the years. So. We are all here rooting for you, Hannah, and we're so honored that you took the time to talk with us today and share all the good works that you're doing. Um, and we only hope, wish you the best for you and the sea turtle as time goes on. Thank you. Um, I hope uh, they were very inspired by this um, and I hope they can do some things in their little local areas and try to make a change where they're at as well. So um, thank you. Um, we're going to let Hannah go for today, but again, continue to post questions in, our, in the comment section and we'll make sure Hannah gets to answer those um, and just look forward to future families in nature. And we can't wait to see what you do, Hannah. Uh, on that note, um, everyone have a wonderful afternoon.